you. Hello, everybody. Yeah. I don't hear it. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. When I say stand up, we say. It's for my school. We stand up. We fight back. We stand up. Fight back. Stand up. Fight back. Stand up. Stand up. I don't hear it. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. And we're standing up for these children all across the state of North Carolina. It's for these children we are standing here. It's for these children we're organizing and we're advocating for quality education. Except for I don't. Last year in April. Jesse, a first grader at Carey's Brightcliffe Elementary School, wrote to senators about the House Bill 13. <laughs> and this is what he wrote, quote unquote, Dear Senators, don't lower class sizes. Next year, so next year we can have PE, art, and music. And I'm going to come back to that later on. Special classes such as art, music, and PE are at the risk of being eliminated along with the teachers' jobs at local school districts who are crafting their budget with HB 13 that is hanging in the balance right now. Last April, in North Carolina, Senate passed the House Bill 13 compromise that will allow the reduction in elementary school sizes over the next two years while addressing local concerns about keeping special subject area teachers in the classroom. The problem is, with this bill that is enacted, it's a class size limit but didn't appropriate enough funds for districts to hire more teachers for the increased number of smaller classes. By fall of this year, North Carolina schools must offer classes in grades kindergarten through three that are considerably smaller than what they are now. And the combined need for funding and space is forcing many locales to consider cutting back not only in the pre-K, but also the arts, music, and education. And I have a question, and I have a question and a message for these legislators who are not willing to fund our education system. It's the foundation of your country's progress and prosperity. How are they not willing to listen to their constituents? How are they not willing to listen to these children who are sitting in freezing temperatures and are standing up for the education? So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? That's right. Now, the House Bill 13 has given school districts one year of leniency in determining class sizes, an important step with smaller K-3 class sizes mandates. I call it unfund unfunded mandate. Uh, the district to make drastic changes in staffing, those changes would likely have Mean reductions in arts, physical science, and other education. He's a good teacher. Now, a lot of the speakers have already discussed this, so I'm going to skip a lot of this detail. I know it's getting cold, and I know all of you are thinking about getting some hot chocolate, so I'm going to skip a few of the things and get to the point. The lawmakers have required, as outlined, HB 13, an additional classroom, additional classrooms for smaller K3 class sizes. But places like Warren County would have to build out new brick and mortar structures, which would be a years long process and not something that could be done in time for the fall of 2018. The problem is that they can't do it because they don't have the funding for it. Children's education is the key to our nation's prosperity and growth. America's progress depends on quality education and that education starts from pre-K and onward. Our teachers are the pillars of our schools. They are the most important people in our educational system. Now, this bill is also going to impact, it's also going to impact low income people. The low income people are the ones that are going to get most impacted by this. The pre-K education is federally and state funded. And this really begs the question, what is the hidden agenda behind this? 
What is these legis legis legislatures are trying to do? We are already seeing in this state and across the nation that there are policies being installed in our system that are marginalizing underprivileged communities. Shame on these people who are not willing to fund our elementary education across this country in the state of North Carolina. And I'm seeing this in other parts of the state too. I was talking to somebody yesterday and this child travels in the public bus every day in Wake County. And I was told that there's so many students now that some of the students had to sit in the aisle of the bus. They couldn't find any seatings. Okay? We are one of the richest nations in this world. This state has a lot of investments from a lot of IT companies, from technological companies, from academia, a lot of grants, but they can't fund our elementary education. They can't, they're wanting to uh, lower the size of the classes, but they can't fund programs, they can't fund keeping our teachers. And if we lose our teachers, we're gonna lose our education. Yes. So I'm gonna end here it is really important for all of us to get involved, to get active, to organize, start using our social media, start writing about this on your Facebook, start using Twitter accounts, start emailing, start having conversations, start spreading awareness. Because if we don't do it, we can't repeal HB 13. So what are you going to do? You're going to stand up. We're gonna stand up! We're gonna stand up! We're gonna stand up! We're gonna stand up! Keep fighting, thank you!